this is another real-time colored pencil drawing and uh, this video is going to be a little bit long but uh, you will see the entire process the actual process of drawing with colored pencils in real time and uh, for this particular uh, portrait I uh, am using Prismacolor colored pencils with the exception of the black the black is the only non Prismacolor pencil that I use this is the uh, Karen Dash Karen Dash luminance and I'm sorry about uh, the traffic outside my studio you would hear all those uh, vehicles passing by but uh, I know you don't mind but uh, yeah I, I already finished the right eye now I'm going to do exactly how I did this eye right here so um, because a lot of you are requesting to start with the eyes and to see the process of drawing eyes in real time because uh, the, the eyes is uh, one of the most difficult parts to draw So with this particular drawing, I uh, will use the burnishing technique, the simplest uh, and the most basic way of blending wax-based colored pencils like Prismacolor. So this is the burnishing technique. And uh, I decided to use the burnishing technique because uh, the reference photo, as you can see, of this uh, beautiful uh, face of uh, Blackpink Jenny uh, doesn't have uh, much contrast or uh, the, the, the shadows are not very dark. The shadows are just light and very, um, very simple. So uh, I decided to use just Prismacolor, basic burnishing technique, and the paper that I use is the smooth surface of the Strathmore. So I like using a smooth paper um, with Prismacolor when I draw something like this, uh, like this very smooth, simple skin tone, fair skin tone, and uh, like the, this kind of Korean Asian skin tones like this that doesn't have too much shadow, dark shadows, so... Even this tiny part of the eyes, the retina, has lots of details and shadows. So I'm just still using the black um, and uh, I'm approaching it by using different uh, level of pressure that I put. I put a little bit of pressure on solid black parts like here. And then I use very, very uh, light pressure on some shadow areas with... A little bit of darkness to it like like here i don't want to overly put black on this part i just want to put a very very light shadow right here because even if even the white the supposed to be white part of the eyes is not really it's not exactly white it has actually lots of shadows and colors uh that we need to build to make the eyes more realistic so a little bit of sh uh, dark shadow here and here using light pressure and then I want to go a little bit darker on this part around the retina and there are some details darker details that uh, I need to put right here her eyelid is not very dark so I just want to put uh, using light pressure a little bit of this black and I'm gonna tone it later using uh, some brighter colors but i just want to establish this solid eyelid right here using just a little bit of this just gentle touch of this black let's start building the skin tone i'm gonna start with this prismacolor french gray if you notice i didn't use black on her eyebrows but uh, i use this french gray instead of the black because i just want to build the shadows first under the the individual hairs of the eyebrows because if i put black i wouldn't be able to build uh, the skin tone under the hair of the eyebrows so that is my first tip uh when it comes to drawing eyebrows especially if the eyebrows are not very thick like female eyebrows that you can see individual hair strands you don't want to start by drawing the hair or the individual hair using black or any other dark colors what you want to do is to build the skin tone 
under the eyebrows first like what I'm doing here very gently with this French gray and uh, you just I just want to extend the French gray on the actual skin tone right here to have like uh, fluidity from the skin tone on the eyebrows and here on the actual skin tone so I use uh, French gray not only because uh, I can see on the reference photo that the uh, um, the skin tone has a little bit of a grayish tone but uh, uh, more importantly I use this French gray to uh, block in the gentle shadows of the skin tone so even if you can see on your reference that she has a very white skin tone or fair skin tone uh, if you observe closely you will see that uh, there are still some shadows that you need to work on to be able to build realistic uh, fair skin tone or smooth skin tone so so the same french gray over the eyebrows and then i extend it on the actual skin tone especially here on this part and right here to build the the shadow right here and to make the eyes more realistic so this again is the prismacolor french gray Um, this kind of paper, the Bristol Smooth, is uh, very nice uh, to use with uh, this kind of skin tone. Just uh, not too much contrast, not very dark, but very fair and very light skin tones. Uh, you can use the smooth surface Bristol papers. But this particular paper, even if uh, it's smooth, smooth it's, it's a lot smoother compared to the vellum surface. But still, uh, the paper allows you to multi-layer. It uh, really accepts the... the the shadows and the layers really nicely and very smoothly so I think uh, we don't need to heavy burnish I think light burnishing is uh, enough to achieve a smooth skin tone So I'm still on the process of blocking in the very delicate uh, shadows around the eyes and I, I'm doing it with a very light pressure. I don't want it to be too dark because uh, the skin tone is quite fair and smooth. Typical uh, Korean skin tone. So I'm still using this wonderful color right here for the shadows. This is the French grey. I also want to add this French gray here on the uh, white part of the eyes. Now I'm gonna continue deepening the shadows by using this very nice dark brown here. It's, it's sepia, it's actually sepia. First, I'm gonna put this uh, sepia, or you can use any dark brown, on top of those parts that uh, where I put the black a while ago, to make it more natural looking. I wanna put this sepia also here on the um, eye or retina of the of her eye, especially on. The details right here okay, so I want to put this sepia also uh, very gently and very lightly here on the eyebrows this is not still the actual eyebrows this is just the shadow the dark shadow uh, from the skin tone under the actual hair of the eyebrows I just want to establish this dark shadow on the skin tone But I didn't put black on the eyebrows yet because uh, um, I don't want it to be too dark because her eyebrows will be dark enough when we add uh, the individual strands of uh, eyebrows or the hair of the eyebrows. 
uh, towards the end of our uh, of our drawing you don't want to draw the eyebrows on the beginning of the drawing stage because uh, you will not be able to establish the skin tone underneath the eyebrows if you already add the hair so basically I'm what I'm doing here is I'm here on the layering process I'm going from dark to light but um, after the layering when we decide to burnish already towards the end I can go back and forth by using the same pencils to uh, to make everything uh, fully blended and to correct everything so we're going to go back with the same pencils towards the end to finish the entire uh, uh, burnishing process but during during the layering I go from dark to light so using this sepia I want to intensify the lines here I think this is I don't know what it's called but it's the eyelid uh, rather the, the second line first I want to tone this white part of the eye with this blue violet color this part right here the shadow the darker shadow and I wanna put some here on the edge of the uh, retina and uh, I noticed that there is a little bit of blue tone that she used on her makeup right here And there is a very nice uh, shadow. I don't know if this is a blue makeup or just the, the... I think this is makeup. That's why I can see some nice touch of blue. And even here on the side of the... What do you call this part? Of the eyes. So don't, don't uh, be afraid of using colors that uh, if you try to think of it you, you will not be able to find on the skin tone but uh, just draw what you see and don't be afraid to use colors like this like uh, blue colors because when we burnish and we blend everything together it will all make sense and uh, uh, it will look more realistic and really close to your reference photo but I don't want to put this color on all, all the part of the skin tone just on specific areas where I can see this uh, tone comes from now I'm layering uh, this color this is called the mahogany red to add a little bit more uh, saturation with the skin tone So as you can see, I, I am extending the layers on the part where the eyebrows is going to be drawn later on. I mean the, the individual hairs. But for now, I'm just establishing the skin tone or the shadow under the uh, eyebrows. This shadow right here under the eyebrow should be uh, really nice solid. So the, the eyebrows will be will look realistic when we uh, draw the strands of eyebrows later. So we are still on the layering process. Because uh, this is a uh, smooth paper, but uh, this is uh, by Strathmore, that's why it has very nice um, surface. Even if uh, it is a smooth surface, it can hold many layers of colored pencils, as you can see right here. I've added several layers already, but uh, the paper is still getting it. And, uh, and uh, I'm sure that I will not have a hard time blending and burnishing because uh, this is a smoother paper, so the tooth is not, uh, it's not very intense. So I think uh, this paper is really perfect, a smooth. Uh, paper is perfect for this kind of skin tone skin tones with no uh, no dark shadows there are shadows but not very dark and the contrast is just mild 
So if you are drawing like a female skin tone, smooth skin tone, that is really nice and white and fair, or an Asian skin tone, um, without any dark shadows or without any extreme lighting, I think this is a perfect combination. Please, my color on Bristol Smooth Paper. Let's make this part right here a little bit reddish. So what's this color again? This is the mahogany red. Now I'm gonna add and layer this beautiful lavender color. I think you should also get this lavender on your palette when you are drawing with colored pencils. This are this lavender is very very useful when it comes to the skin tone. But I want to put just a very light layer of this lavender. Oh, this is a nice concentration of this lavender right here on the, what do you call it, the eye bags. Now I want to put uh, a little touch of this dark green. I think this is marine green. You can use any dark green color. Just a gentle, delicate touch of this color. And uh, it will make the skin tone more realistic. What I do actually when I pick the colors that I use is I pre-pick. I take time to study my reference photo and then I just pick the colors that I might use. and. Uh, from those colors that I chose, I can decide while drawing. I can decide if I can, I will use it, or or there are colors that I might not use. Or um, you will realize when you are drawing already, uh, if you if you need to add uh, a specific color. So just be flexible when it comes to picking colors. You don't need to be really exact with your colors because our reference photos are different. So you just need to be if you are into realism, you just need to be really faithful to your reference photo. Although. It's not going to be a crime if you for if you weren't able to choose the exact combination of colors so as long as you get really nice close to, to the color of your reference photo. So I, I think this skill is something if you are new with colored pencils, don't worry if you at the beginning, if you're a beginner and you, you find it really hard to pick exact color combinations, uh, that is normal to find it difficult because uh, it's not really easy. But this skill is something that you will learn over time. Uh, your eyes will be trained when you just continuously doing portraits with colored pencils and don't be too harsh on yourself if you don't get exactly the, the colors that the, the, the reference photo require uh, but uh, uh, when you continue practicing you will learn it over time and uh, it will be just automatic to you when you see a specific reference you immediately know uh, what colors to use and to combine then I want to add this green I'm going to sharpen it first I just want to add it right here on the supposed to be white part of the eye, but it's not really white. And then, of course, I almost forgot that I needed to put this green on her eye, on her retina. What do you call this? Uh, the retina of the eye. Her eyes is a little bit greenish, as you can see right here. So, you can see now that uh, we are getting close to this part. This is the burnished part. This is the layered part already. This is, it's not yet burnished, but we're getting there as long as we were able to build the layers that we need before we do the burnishing. Now we need this clay rose. This is the last layer that uh, we need to put before we start burnishing. So this is clay rose.
actually I'm already semi burnishing using this clay rose especially on the darker shadows although, although there is no significantly dark shadow but uh, uh, for the solid shadow parts I'm already like adding a little bit of pressure to semi burnish this especially for dark parts like here I can just add uh, heavier pressure just to uh, like burnish already these parts but like what I said a while ago uh, during the burnishing process uh, you can just go back and forth by using the same pencils that you used that I used a while ago I think I wanna start burnishing this uh, retina of the eye with this um, clay rose so this is the layered skin tone this is the burnish skin tone now I think I'm ready to burnish so I wanna introduce to you to my burnishers these are the colors that I chose uh, the colors that you choose as burnishers will depend also on the reference photo but I think this is pretty generic this three uh, I think you can use it uh, on almost any kind of skin tone as burnisher. So I have here the peach beige, I have here the nectar, and of course the ultimate burnisher, the white. So this is how I burnish. So I start with this one, the nectar, because I don't want to lose uh, my dark shadows, so I will need the nectar. This is a very nice pale uh, flesh, dark flesh, that uh, will burnish dark shadows, darker shadows, but will uh, actually preserve the intensity of the color. So uh, you don't want to lose those intensity. I'm going to start here on the skin tone. Uh, under the eyebrows so later on I can start blowing the eyebrows the actual uh, strand of hair on the eyebrows so this is I, I hope you can observe this process because it's very important to achieve well blended skin tone so this the idea is to just get rid of any tooth although, although this is a smooth paper it still has tooth although it's the, the tooth is very fine compared to the vellum surface but it still has tooth that you might want to get rid of during the burnishing and just uh, achieve really nice smooth skin tone so I'm applying now heavier pressure compared to the pressure that I used during the layering process okay so I want to extend this uh, nectar burnisher right here on the darker side okay just establish the darker shadows and here I want to put heavier pressure right here because this is nice and solid uh, shadow here on the makeup the second line of her eyes and here so I hope you can see that I'm putting heavier pressure I'm uh, burnishing using medium to heavy pressure because the idea is to blend everything every layer at the same time to get rid of the tooth of the paper and then um, I don't want to extend the burnishing uh, as intense as the, on this part because this is a little bit lighter so I want to just put light pressure here and I'm gonna use the white later on on these parts right here on the uh, like uh, semi highlighted parts but on these parts the, the darker solid shadows I want to put pressure Now you can see that we are very close in achieving this here on this left eye. Now I'm ready with my second burnisher right here. This is the peach beige. It has, I don't know, but it has a very nice light with a little bit of a greenish tone because I can see that the overall skin tone has this light, delicate greenish tone. So I decided to just use this peach beige to add this greenish, lovely tone and at the same time to burnish. So I just want to extend the burnishing to um, almost every part of this uh, left eye. Especially here on the highlighted uh, part. And then right here because I can see that there is uh, a concentration of greenish tone on the light shadow right here. And of course I'm going to extend on the... And at the same time give it a really nice greenish tone. I don't know why is it called peach beige but I can see it's like more of a very uh, delicate greenish tone so we are now again we are now on the uh, burnishing stage we are now making sure that uh, we get rid of the tooth of the paper 
and blend and uh, flatten the tooth and at the same time blend all the layers and make sure that it will look like uh, everything comes pretty good together. Actually, this peach beige is the main burnisher of this white part of her eyes. Now it's time to use the ultimate blender and burnisher, the white. Uh, uh, especially on the lighter to mid tone. So this part like right here is a little bit lighter so we're going to burnish it using the white. The white actually has um, many purpose. Aside from burnishing, it can be used to highlight, it can be used to correct. If there are parts that you made dark that you want to make lighter, you can just use the white pencil. And now, before we add the hair, or the eyelashes and the eyebrows, you can just go back and forth with the same colors that you use during the layering uh, to just correct the tone of some parts right here. I want to make it a little bit of reddish, so I go back with this very nice uh, mahogany red. So I want to make it a little bit reddish and even the shadow here that uh, was lost a little bit during the burnishing. So I just want to go back and just replenish the lost tones and colors. But now everything is smooth and really burnished and blended. But uh, since I'm using a quality paper, which is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth, I can be able to add colors. The, the, pen, the papers is, should accept, even if the, on the burnish parts, it should accept uh, more colors that you are going to add towards the end of the blending process. Now I want to go back as well with my black to darken and deepen some parts right here. And here now I'm gonna use the white just to show some of the highlights here and I don't want to use white pen for the center highlights on the retina because I can see that uh, this is not very sharp white it's just very uh, light so I want to use just the white pencil for the center highlights right highlight right here so it's gonna break because they're putting pressure, but that's okay. Can you see that very gentle highlight right here? Right there. Just like that. And I wanna do that with the black to put around the highlights to make it pop a little bit. Now I'm gonna put, using the black pencil, some of the because her eyebrows are pretty thin, so I just want to gently put some hair strands for the eyelashes, or rather, eyebrows. And now, I want to use the sepia just to smoothen or to like, uh, because the black is very sharp, now I want to be able to smoothen the strand and to tone it lighter. I mean the individual here of the eyebrows. It's not purely black. There are some lighter strands, so I just want to use this sepia. 
now can you see the value of uh, putting uh, the shadow and the skin tone under the, the eyebrows Now to uh, further smoothen the edges and to lighten up some parts of the eyebrows, I'm going to go back to use this clay rose color right here. And finally the white to lighten up uh, some parts of the eyebrows. And to make sure that some of the hair will pop out. And finally, I'm going to use my black to draw her eyelashes. Now I'm going to put some sepia on the tip of the eyelashes so the eyelashes down here is not very dark so I'm gonna use uh, just use the sepia in terms of in, uh, instead of the black So this is it. This is just a part one of this particular drawing using colored pencils in real time. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for appreciating this kind of drawing tutorial. Thank you for tolerating my limited English and my funny accent. And I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for always supporting my channel. And I hope that uh, I was able to impart some uh, lesson in terms of building reali realistic skin tone using colored pencils using this classic burnishing technique. Thank you, everyone.